Well, so this is a video I wanted to make to explain my news publishing workflow for my blog. So this is how you can create an automatic uh, news feed on your blog. It's kind of like mine, so I'll show you what I have right now. So what I have is over here, I have news. And right here, this is always coming up with new news articles that are related to skateboarding um, that are just coming out. Um, so there's from today, and I don't even look at it. Uh, I, I, I personally do edit them, but you don't necessarily have to because they come out looking pretty pretty solid with an image and just the news article. Now notice that they're very short. It's because these are supposed to be just news articles. Um, and, and in this next one, I actually went ahead and added like a, a video to it, but it, would, it wouldn't come with a video, but it comes with all the uh, information related to the news and it expands it a little bit. So. How I made this is with make.com. So what happens here is I have an RSS feed um, and you, what you need to do is you need to go to Google News first and create, and uh, or not create, you need to search for your topic. Um, and after you find your topic, skating, let's say randomly, um, then you will take the, I think this, take the URL of that and then you create an account with rss.app. And then after you create an account, it'll ask you like, what it, you know, what feed do you, you want to make and then in the new feed you would you would enter your uh the google news uh url and then it'll take a second it takes like a minute to create the feed somehow i don't know why it takes so long and then it'll say here's your url and then there you go that you can copy that url from rss.app and then you can go over to here and in this um this module you will pl paste that and I have it set to return one item so that every time that the sequence happens, it happens to one item. Um, there's better ways to do this. I don't really have the, this is not optimized. It's very low optimized, but it just works. It's like an MVP, minimal viable product. Um, I have it set to every 180 minutes it'll do this. So at what, every 180 minutes, it'll look for a new article. And that's only so that I can make sure that it's not copying something and then immediately copying something that it already copied. Again, not very high optimized. There's better ways to do this. But uh, after it does that, it'll grab that content. It'll throw it into a spreadsheet that I have here. So you will create the the spreadsheet. Uh, how do you create the spreadsheet? You just create the module and then connect all the stuff. Um, and it'll spit this. What is this filter? Uh, I don't even know, remember what this filter is. I think it's just if if the URL. Yeah. So if this URL, if the URL of the feed is already in column A, then do not add it. If it is, then then continue. Um, yeah, I think that's it. So it's just searching. So this is just searching if it already exists. And if it does not already exist, then it moves on. I forgot what this aggregator actually even does. Um, moving on, this is a web uh, content scraper. Um, I'd have to post this to you because it's not publicly available. You'll have to download it. Um, but it's from Hassan. He's a YouTuber. He created this module and you can just Go to it, install it, and then it's already in your make account. And the API key is just this. Uh, and then what that'll do is it'll scrape that URL and then it'll update the row. So, oh no, it won't update the row. It'll add a new row. So at this point, there was no row. The first Excel module searched that nothing was duplicated. The, the, the URL didn't already exist. Now that it doesn't already exist, it'll continue scraping and then it'll make a new row. And when it makes a new row, it'll add the URL here. The next step is it'll, uh, this is actually not necessary, a router. Um, that's if I wanted to publish this to multiple things, but I, I guess I could technically just delete this altogether, but I won't do that right now. Um, then it'll go from here to here. So what Anthropic will do, I use Anthropic, not ChatGPT because it creates better content for me. And you can see here's my prompt. It's not the biggest prompt in the world. It's not the shortest in the world. It just has my tone of voice and exactly what I want in a specifically a news article, not a blog post. Those are totally different. So that's what I have here. Uh, yep. And, and notice here, uh, I have content. When it runs, this would not be gray. This would be like a darker gray. But notice that below is the source content for the article. And these, and how this all works is by variables. So the variable here is content. So it's grabbing content from here, throwing it to here. And how does it know what it is? Because it, what's a variable? So this creates a variable with all the content, and then I can reference it right here. Um, and then similarly, I have another because there's no real good way to chat. 
with make.com right now for these type of systems. So you just have to pile a, pile a bunch of these on top of each other. So this is creating the content and then I say here's my content and then I wanted to edit it even further. So I wanted to add some things, remove some things, just make sure that it's uh, highly optimized. And ideally you'd make three or four more of these checks because then after this finishes, it'll make a new variable and then you would create a new anthropic module saying, hey, now with all this perfect content, do this more stuff. And that's how you get a really good con uh, piece of content. Uh, and then it'll take this content, I make it into Markdown. So I want it to go from Markdown to HTML. And this is something that I'm not sure if it works properly yet, so don't mind it. You can actually just go straight from here to here. But what I'm trying to do here, actually from here to here, but what I'm trying to do here is use a parser to eliminate some content uh, using rejects. If you don't know what that is, don't worry about it, it doesn't matter. Um, that is, so let's say we're going from Markdown straight into here and we delete these two. It'll then take that content and it'll create the, the post title. So here's a post title and there it is. I used ChatGPT because it's, it's just, uh, um, it costs less API calls. ChatGPT is a little bit less expensive. So then I use ChatGPT to create the content, but I give it the content and then I say make the, make the post. Then I do the same thing for the slug. Then I do the same thing for the excerpt. Now note, pay attention to the fact that these are all creating different variables, which I'm gonna reference as you can see right over here. So when I click on, let me fast forward a little bit. So here I have result, create and, and uh, result. Now look at result 20 and result two. This, it's different because these are different, mod the responses from different modules. So even though this is called result, it's a result for one of these and not the other. Same for, with this. Um, and then this one's creating the, so you have to create the media, in, so you have to upload the image that Dolly created and then upload it to WordPress and then that WordPress image is then uploaded to the post. So it's kind of, this is kind of the process. And then to, and then I use a get post, I, and then I reference the post ID so that I can update my Excel spreadsheet with a few things like the editor URL and the post URL that I just created. And then I also say, all right, now that you've finished everything, go ahead and complete, just mark this as complete. And that's it. So in the spreadsheet, I have my original content, the original published date, which actually this is not correct. <laughs> so I, I messed up something here uh, in the code. Um, let's take a look if I can see that real quick. Original published. That's weird, uh, original date and it's set to result. That's why you see there's the problem. So it shouldn't have been set to result. It should have been set to uh, update date, yeah, see? So it should have had this instead. So you could, there you go, you see me fixing something right in the spot. And then of course I gotta click save, but then after it finishes all of that, it finally what it does is it shoots me an email letting me know that new article has been published with the, with the post title of this. And you can run this whenever you want. The minimum you can do is 15 minutes, but you can highly optimize this. So I have it pretty badly optimized right now. I don't have any filters for location or date or anything like that, but I'm sure that there are some settings that you can do. And it's something that I just haven't worked on a lot. It's just a proof of concept, but it does work. Uh, and yeah, this is the kind of stuff that it'll pop out. So. And I also want, definitely want to see the late, the actual uh, content because I actually sometimes want to compare what it created to what it gave me. And sometimes you'll find that, whoa, that's, that actually had some hallucinations, which is really not good. Um, so let's go ahead and, and edit that and fix that and stuff like that. Uh, this is, I might have deleted that one. That's why it's not showing. But either way, that's how you do the whole workflow. If you enjoyed that, just let me know if you have more questions. Uh, I don't have too many answers though. Um, I'm not a pro at make. It's just me trying to figure this out as we go along. So that's it.